What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. By request, I'm making this video going over my shoulder rig build. I'm on a new I know that when I was building it, it was extremely helpful to be able to go to YouTube and binge watch other people's setups, and it really helped me decide some of the deciding factors as far as follow focus and things like that. So to keep this video super short and sweet, let's go ahead and jump straight in. Starting at the front of the rig, I have the Tilta Nucleus Nano. It's an impressive wireless follow focus system that's small and compact and extremely easy to set up. Being a big fan of Tilta products, I expected it to be really nice, and when I finally got my hands on it, it was just that, amazing. Amazing, I tell you, it was amazing. The focus controller is mounted to the small rig rosette handle kit using the included quick release plate. I especially love the small rig handles because they include a rosette extension arm, allowing you to mount the handles a bit lower and control the angle just to make it even more comfortable controlling and holding the shoulder rig. The handles also include quarter inch threads on the front and back and hot shoe mounts on the side. The extension arms are also threaded with three quarter inch threads and two three eighth inch threads. The 15 millimeter rods came from a newer shoulder rig kit. I got that because it includes a lot of attachments that I could manipulate to make this build work. Connected to the small rig extension arm is a small rig 11 inch friction arm with the Atomus Ninja Flame attached to it. When I was first building this rig, it was for my A7S II, but now that I have the FS5, I'll be changing out the Ninja Flame for a Shogun Inferno for various reasons that I'll get into in a later video. The map box that I'm using is the Camtree MB23. It's built out of strong carbon fiber, which also means it's gonna be lightweight. I especially like this one because when it comes to changing out the lenses, it's as simple as pulling the lever at the top and swinging the map box out, allowing for easy access. The camera is mounted on top of the newer quick release plate that was included with the shoulder kit. I kept that because it allows me to quickly detach the camera without taking off anything else. Simply loosen the side screw and off it goes. It also helps with the cable management, allowing me to pass cables through the bottom of the quick release plate. The battery solution I'm using is the Canvate V-Lock mounting plate. It's awesome because it's a cheese plate on one side, but also has a USB, two DC ports, and a DTAP port all on the plate. Just simply mount your V-Lock battery and boom, you're good to go. The shoulder pad is also Canvate, which is mounted under the quick release plate. At some point, I'll end up changing this out for a VCT plate so that I can mount it to a tripod a little bit easier. But for now, it gets the job done. Lastly, the counterweight at the back was, wasn't really needed, but it came with a newer kit and I decided to use it because when it comes to setting down the rig, I can set it down and have the handles and the actual counterweight touch the ground instead of any of the other components. That's just me, I guess. And that's it. All the components that I use to build my shoulder rig. I'm on a new if you found this video helpful, consider hitting that like button and smash that subscribe button. My channel is all about filmmaking tips, tutorials, and product reviews. And until next time, keep shooting. That, was, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. I'm just going to cut the camera at this point. Peace! Peace.